systems, or I'd guess maybe 80% of you have seen some pure type systems in sun setting and maybe seen a statement of the Van Dracovir's hot conjecture because it is just one of these um, uh, big open questions in the air. Um, and then spend a little bit of time talking about dependency, dependency eliminating translations, um, primary part of this work, and um, then go on to open questions. And so, yeah, I do feel a little bit like sort of the, the, uh, the silly American who's coming like guns a-blazing after this like big open question, but I just want to say that my aim isn't to, you know, I'm not gunning for this, uh, this uh, conjecture, but I, I mostly want to highlight that, uh, you know, in starting to think about this question um, in a tight enough setting, there are still a fair amount of open questions that I think are very approachable. And so if you are interested in sort of normalization uh, techniques in general, I think there's a lot of um, interesting questions left to answer in this area, of course. That, that aren't completely unattainable, I think. Um, so some background. I'm surprised we've gotten this far without seeing a picture of the Lambda Cube. Uh, I know we, uh, we all probably know it, but uh, it's quite a beautiful thing, so we can look at it for a second. Um, uh, the Lambda Cube uh, is given by a mere you know, seven rules, which is nice. We can put them all in one slide. It's quite, quite nice. Um, has a you know, fairly simple grammar. We have rules for uh, abstraction, rules for application, and then the, the main thing we want to look at here is the, um, the way that we're able to abstract over types in the function um, the creation rule. And in particular, we have this set R that I haven't specified. And the set R is just going to be given by whether or not you are able to abstract over types and kinds. And various collection, uh, um, combinations are going to give you various uh, uh, features in the type system that you're working with at the end of the day. And so getting to pure type systems, um, the only thing that we change, I tried to highlight them in color. Um, it's sort of like the, the most obvious generalization that you would think if you were looking at the lambda calculus. If I said, okay, um, uh, if, I, if I gave you the system, the lambda cube, and I said, okay, generalize this, this is probably what you would uh, end up coming up with. Um, so rather than just having types and kinds, we can have an arbitrary set of sorts. And rather than just saying that type is a kind, we can have any relation between any two sorts. And then, rather than just being able to specify that we can uh, abstract over types or kinds, and we can actually choose any you know, triple sorts, and we can get even a new sort after we've done um, the quantification. And so, again, some more uh, definitions that we all already know. Um, you know. A system is weakly normalizing if all of its typable terms have normal forms. And it's strongly normalizing if there's no infinite um, uh, reduction sequence from a, a typable term. And so in this setting, we're only ever going to care about uh, um, uh, beta reduction, although I know there is some work on uh, also considering beta eta reduction in the setting of pure type systems. And the, so the Van Dracovir cloud conjecture just says that uh, weak normalization implies strong normalization for every, every pure type system. So a fairly um, a simple statement. I think um, you know, the best conjectures are the ones that are very easy to understand. And so this is, you know, fits that bill. Um, and my understanding is that, you know, this conjecture is motivated by a collection of uh, uh, works that were coming out around the same time that it was conjectured, in which um, people were deriving uh, weak normalization from strong norm normalization for systems in the lambda cube. And so, you know, this, there hasn't been very much progress on this problem for quite a bit of time. And so it's natural to ask, you know, why is this question so hard? Um, well. Pure type systems, in some sense, are sort of the most obvious generalization of the lambda cube. But uh, in reality, um, they're a little bit too unwieldy. We have too much, too much uh, freedom in the definition, and they uh, tend to lose good metatheoretic properties. So you know, uh, you lose, for example, type unicity very quickly if you have uh, sorts that can be sorted in multiple ways. Um, and then the, the other thing about pure type systems is that we don't actually have that many examples of, of like bizarre pure type systems. We, we have examples of pure type systems based on languages that have existed in the past, and, but those tend to have either very few sorts or they have um, a lot of sorts, like in the case of the extended calculus of constructions, um, but with some very, very regular structure. And so we don't have uh, a, a nice collection of examples of pure type systems which have just like bizarro structure so that we can actually start trying to answer like how, do, how does sort structure affect the uh, normalization uh, behavior of the system that you're working in. And so one idea is you know, to consider a subclass of pure type systems and that generalizes the lambda cube. So it looks kind of like the systems that we know. 
um, but maintains some of the useful meta-theoretic properties. Uh, so, you know, this isn't a new idea. People have been considering things like functional pure type systems for quite a bit of time. Um, but I want to consider moving the goalpost even closer and look at a very, very concrete class of pure type systems. And so I've been calling these tiered pure type systems. And the very simple structure, we have n sorts, say, uh, you know, pick your pick number, three, four, five. And then the axioms are we have basically uh, um, uh, a hierarchy of, uh, of types in the same way that we would have um, in the extended calculus of constructions, but uh, truncated at a uh, 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 up to a finite level. Um, so I, I know that uh, in, in his uh, loose paper on the extended calculus of constructions, he does consider systems that look uh, kind of like this, but are subsystems of the um, extended calculus of constructions. And then we're going to further restrict the rules to look a little bit more like the rules that are in the, the lambda cube. So even though we do have the freedom to, de to define the last uh, uh, sort that we get out, uh, after doing quantification, we're just going to restrict ourselves to always assuming that we're going to get um, the same sort as the, the uh, source space of the, the quantification. Um, so this is, is very much mirroring what's happening in the lambda cube. And so, you know, just in case you haven't seen this sort of thing, the main sort of uh, meta-theoretic property that we maintain from the lambda cube that's the most useful in this kind of system is a kind of classification lemma in which we can um, basically uh, 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 partition the, the set of terms into levels, which allows us uh, to do sort of induction on the levels that we have. Um, so this is just sort of a technical lemma. It's not terribly important to get the details, but this is sort of one feature that we have in the lambda cube that we like to have if we want to do proofs um, for these sorts of systems. And so it's worth noting that with respect to normalization, these are actually equivalent to so-called uh, stratified pers persistent pure type systems and other class of pure type systems that people have considered. But I think um, uh, these are much more simply stated, I think much uh, more approachable. Uh, stratified persistent systems can be viewed as, as direct products as these sorts of systems and a normalization is preserved uh, through direct products. And so the other thing that I really like about these systems is that, you know, I, I, I you know, not, not so bright, so I like, I like being able to visualize things and these things are very easy to draw. I mean, you can just basically draw the sorts that you have in a line and then you can represent the, the rules as arrows. Um, and then it's very easy to just sort of draw a picture of the system that you're looking at. So when you're, when you're working and you're trying to, you know, uh, you, you kill some time while you're trying to figure out something to do, you can just draw the system over and over again. And uh, it seems like you, you know, get a sense of how it looks, I guess. And so on the right, we can, or, or I guess the left, we can see a, a visual representation of um, calculus of constructions. And basically the entire lambda cube is just going to be subgraphs of the system. And then on the, on the right we have um, a representation of uh, lambda minus. And so we can ask the alternative question, for this particular class of uh, pure type systems, does the BGK conjecture hold? And furthermore, if we believe the conjecture to some degree for this class of systems, then we should be able to basically classify which ones of these systems uh, are strongly normalizing and which ones are not weakly normalizing. <coughs> and so the last thing you have to, to state in the background, uh, the thing that makes this interesting is that uh, we have Girard's paradox which tells us that lambda U minus is not weakly normalizing, so we have a proof of uh, a false in the system. Um, and you know, just as a, a side note, this is proved by um, encoding Borelli 40, lambda U, or uh, Reynolds theorem. And so, you know, a natural question we can ask is, well, lambda minus is one of the tier these tiered systems. So are there any other non-normalizing um, tiered pure type systems? It's kind of interesting that, you know, we haven't been able to come up with any other uh, pure type systems that have this non-normalization property. So it makes this question of whether or not um, this uh, conjecture holds very, very tricky. And this also means that, you know, George's paradox means that any um, proofs that we have in this area are necessarily going to have to be at least a little bit interesting. So if you think about like the case of n equals three, uh, in which uh, we do have lambda u minus, um, if you were to come up with some kind of uniform strong normalization proof for the three tiered pure type systems, then you'd somehow have to be able to uh, have a technique that was able to uh, uh, basically skip over the case that we have uh, an embedding of lambda u minus in the system that we're looking at. Okay. So moving on to what I uh, actually uh, have been working on, uh, sort of dependency eliminating translations. 
Um, the objectives for the rest of what I want to talk about, I briefly want to outline the existing generalizations that exist for um, normalization results in the peer type system setting. Um, I do want to discuss briefly just the idea of dependency eliminating translations, uh, briefly touch on the challenges of generalizing uh, the translations that exist, and then describe uh, the current state of the work that I've done uh, with applications to a stronger version of the Van Drake of Yerkeshoff conjecture. So I just wanted to give a quick list of the results that do exist uh, with respect to normalization in the pure type system setting. There aren't that many, uh, which is a little surprising, uh, so we can fit them all on one side. So it proves that the extended calculus of constructions is strongly normalizing, and that's not exactly a, a, a normalization result in pure type systems, but we can view the extended calculus of constructions as a, uh, or at least a reasonable subsystem of it as a pure type system. Um, and then uh, yeah, Lays and Wenger uh, generalized the, uh, uh, the lambda set method uh, with Altenkirk uh, to give a generic strong normalization proof for pure type systems. It is qu uh, quite a nice result, but admittedly a, a little bit tricky to work with. And then the, the work that's probably closest to um, what I'm trying to approach here is this uh, uh, Barth Hatcliffe uh, Sorensen paper in which they extend uh, uh, continuation passing uh, style translations to a class of non-dependent pure type systems to show that the conjecture holds uh, for this class of systems. And so the goal of this work is to generalize the um, dependency eliminating translations of Guevara and uh, 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 based on one of Harper to some class of pure type systems. And so what is a dependency eliminating translation? I've been saying this a bunch. Uh, but I haven't defined it. Well, the, the, the basic idea is that if we want to prove that some system is strongly normalizing, it suffices to give a translation of those terms um, that is uh, infinite reduction path reserving, preserving and typeability preserving into some weaker system that we already know is strongly normalizing. So Harper gives a translation from uh, lambda p to uh, assembly type lambda calculus the, of this uh, form. Uh, and Guevara and Nerdhoff uh, give one from the calculus of constructions to lambda omega, um, which gives us uh, uh, these uh, strong normalization results. And so we can view both of these translations as eliminating the dependent rule in the system. So the rule uh, that is sort of the right facing arrow in this picture is the one that allows us to have dependent types in the system. And the, the translation is basically translating down into the system that does not contain that rule. And the basic way that we're going to be able to do this is we want to map all of our types and kinds down to some fixed uh, type variable. Uh, I'm just going to call it zero here. And the point is that once we do this, it eliminates the needs for any dependent rules. Because if we have some product, uh, um, uh, pi x a b, uh, and we've replaced b with zero, then the only rules that we ever need are s star. So the, the, the right um, uh, element of the rule is always going to be the lowest type that we have. And so this approach works in the generalization, but we have a couple challenges. First, and this is, this is a challenge that happens even in the case of the calculus constructions, we need to preserve the well-formedness of the types of the translated terms, which may themselves have terms. So what, um, we'll see how we can uh, um, fix this problem. And uh, second one, of course, we need to preserve infinite reduction paths. This was uh, part of the point of these translations. We need to not lose sub uh, subterm information in the translation because if we accidentally drop subterms, we might drop some infinite reduction path um, uh, in the translation. And then one last technical detail that doesn't come up in the case of the calculus constructions but comes up in this translation is that we have to deal with uses of um, bot that won't be uh, the, uh, false that won't be derivable uh, in the system. And I'll say a little bit about that. So the first challenge, uh, preserving typeability, we can't. Uh, immediately translate the terms down to some fixed type zero um, because we need to know that these terms are typable. That's sort of our whole goal. Um, but those terms, those types might themselves have terms and those need to be typable. And so the way that this is handled for the calculus of constructions is we need three translations. One which basically translates all of the, uh, the types that we have and so it shows that those are sort of well formed and then one that translates the terms and then says that they're, they're types uh, that we showed are well-formed, or that they, they have the types of the, that we just showed are well-formed. And so in the generalization, rather than having um, three translations, we're going to have n plus 1 translations defined inductively, 
Uh, this is sort of kind of what you would expect based on the structure. Once we add more uh, sorts to the system, we need more translations to verify that every level, the types that we're using, are, are well formed. Okay, the second challenge, if we're trying to preserve infinite reduction paths, this is, uh, these are uh, examples in the case of uh, the calculus of constructions. If we're trying to translate some predicate, and we're translating star down to some zero, um, this isn't a problem. We can basically do that, and then the translation is gonna work sort of inductively on the structure of the terms that we have, um, and we're not gonna run into any problems. Um, I won't spend too much time on this, just to save time. It turns out that the, the case that ends up being tricky is the case that we have non-dependent rules in the case that we're doing some kind of polymorphism. So if we are to do sort of the same thing that we did in the case of predicates and we do some kind of translation which works inductively on the structure of our terms, um, it's not going to be clear how we're going to be able to derive the type of this term uh, uh, gamma p gamma b because we don't have um, the term uh, uh, rho zero pi anymore. It's no, no longer sitting around the system uh, or in the, uh, the derivation that we have after translation. And so basically what that means is we're gonna have to carry around a lot more information in the terms. We're gonna pass those terms into the pi term and we're gonna build, basically build up a collection of things uh, uh, that we have to also carry around in our pi terms. And so for the generation, this, is, this means that if we're, if we're, you know, in the case of, uh, Three, three translations, that's not so bad, but in the case of n plus one translations, that means that we're just gonna be, end up carrying a, a bunch of extra terms each time, which is gonna put a very a large strain on the non-dependent part of the system. And so just some te uh, uh, technical details here, I, I won't spend too much time on it. Um, we have a notion of a, a full pure type system, which basically, uh, you know, ignoring the details of the definition, basically says that for the rules that exist in the system, everything that sort of sits below those rules has to be a completely full. So this is a very strong restriction because as soon as you have um, fullness you know, below the, in the last three sorts, you're going to necessarily pick up a copy of lambda u. So we can't actually apply this thing, uh, uh, this translation to many uh, pure type systems. And in fact, all the terms that, um, or all the systems that uh, don't contain lambda u are already subsystems of uh, the extended calculus of constructions. And so uh, we already know that they're strongly normalizing. Um, Right, I, I forgot I added this part. So in the la one last technical detail before I say the results, in, in the process of dealing with uh, falses. So here's a definition for a, what a non-dependent re uh, restriction is of a pure type system. Basically in this uh, picture that we have, we're just going to remove all the arrows that are facing right. That's all this definition is saying. And so in the last stage of the translation for uh, the calculus of constructions, we need to throw a copy of uh, false into the uh, context so that we can basically throw in a bunch of dummy terms in the case that we uh, are translating uh, pi terms at the lowest level. So this is an important feature of these translations that they're not preserving any sort of meaning. Um, uh, we're just trying to maintain uh, the, the infinite reduction paths. And so, sorry, these, these, bot term, these false terms aren't going to be necessarily derivable in the systems we're working in, but it turns out that this isn't so bad because the system that we're left with is so scarcely inhabited at the higher sorts that we can basically add a very simple translation at the end to get rid of any uses of this. <coughs> and so, just in the last uh, minute or so that I have, this is the uh, uh, technical statement of uh, the translation result. Uh, there's some translation of terms and types that says that if we can uh, uh, derive some term in uh, our, our full pure type system, then we can also derive the translated term in the, the uh, non-dependent restriction once we've removed all of the uh, forward-facing arrows. And that uh, uh, translation pres preserves type ability, well, yeah, and, and it preserves uh, infinite reduction paths. And so this means that um, if this system is strongly normalizing, or this system is strongly normalizing if it's non-dependent restriction is, and one corollary that's kind of interesting is that this one feature of these translations compared to uh, typical uh, strong normalization results is that they're, very, uh, they're not very dependent uh, uh, foundationally. So we can actually do a lot of these uh, proofs all the way down in piano arithmetic, which isn't gonna be the case for um, uh, uh, strong normalizations proof that depend on, on very large sets, for example. And so this is based on a very simple bootstrapping argument that I'll just finish up with. Um, if we have, if we know that our system is weakly uh, normalizing, then it's uh, non-dependent restriction is. And if it's non-dependent restriction is, then we can apply the other results that we have that say that non-dependent, uh, that weak normalization implies strong normalization for non-dependent systems. 
via these uh, uh, continuation passing translations. And then because of the translation, we then know that the, the full system is actually uh, strongly normalizing. And so the takeaway of this is really, even though we only get in this particular translation a sort of uh, um, a, a, a correlate that has to do with sort of the stronger version of the uh, uh, BGK conjecture, which um, is states that weak normalization and strong normalization are equivalent in piano arithmetic, the point is that if we can build better translations both in the non-dependent part and in the dependent part, then we could actually start to see uh, the BGK conjecture proved for expanded classes of these systems. And so I'm running low on time. Here's just a picture of the translation, just in case you want to stare at it for a second. We can kind of see that in the case of the pi terms, we're sort of picking up a lot of extra terms every time that we uh, sort of go down in the induction um, and then all the way down to uh, sorts. And then I guess as in the last, you know, negative one minute I have, um, just some open questions because I think these are, uh, there's a lot of interesting questions out here and if you are at all interested in these questions, please uh, uh, come and talk to me. Um, the, the main question is, you know, what is the normalization behavior of these tiered pure type systems? Even in the case of n equals three, we don't have a, a solid answer. And in particular, this will probably require us to have a better understanding of what systems in here are actually non-normalizing. Are there any other than lambda u? Minus, and you know there are a bunch of normalization techniques that we have that haven't been uh, generalized to this setting. So I think um, that would be an interesting uh, sort of future work in this area. And so I'll finish off on that. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, Marie, and then you can start running around with the microphone. <laughs> I can do that. Um, do you, is it, do you know or is it known uh, the relationship between your uh, interpretation uh, with the, uh, the one of the uh, parametricity? It looks like a reverse parametricity, like, like in, in parametricity you start making things more dependent. Here somehow you're trying to lower the, uh, the level of dependency. Uh, like it's, it looks like a partial inverse to parametricity, anything? Oh, I, I, I don't know parametricity that well, so that's an interesting connection. I might have to ask you about that. And I can start running around. <laughs> oh, sorry. Are there other other questions? So, uh, in in systems like ACTA, for instance, you have this parallel hierarchy. You have a hierarchy of type and a hierarchy of prop. And so, I was wondering whether it would be easy to kind of generalize your setting to having just not like not one linearly. Uh, like one linear uh, uh, hierarchy of sorts, but maybe uh, multiple ones that would be able to kind of interact. Like keeping this this tiering uh, thing that you really rely on, but not having just one one kind of sort, but maybe multiple ones. Yeah, I mean it's certainly possible in um, pure type systems to uh, to write that sort of thing. Whether or not you maintain the right meta theoretic properties to uh, follow through these sorts of proofs, I actually am not sure at this moment. But I'd have to think about that. So if you have a normalization algorithm for the target uh, uh, system, so for lambda star, for example, does the, this uh, reduction give you also a normalization algorithm for the starting system? Or in other words, how constructive is this statement of uh, strong normalization that you are proving? I don't think it would be uh, terribly easy to uh, extract a, an algorithm out of it, I don't, uh, I don't think, because at the end of the day, you're just sort of um, uh, yeah, translating any infinite reduction path that you have in the first system down into an in infinite reduction path into the second. So um, yeah, I don't think that would actually give you a, a, a strategy, let's say, for, for reducing in, in, in the source space. Further questions? No further questions, then we thank Nathan again for the nice talk. <laughs>